The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the raw and uncensored Ambitious Podcast. I'm your host, the original HBIC, Katie Boyd. During our time here together, I will be instilling all of the strength, power, and determination you will need to use the very stones thrown at you to build your ultimate empire. We will redefine the word bitch from the derogatory to the acronym being in total control of herself. So let's adjust our crowns and prepare to live life ambitiously. Oh yeah, here I am, the original HBIC, Katie motherfucking Boyd. (laughs) And over here is someone who strives to be ambitious, but always misses the mark. (laughs) I am ambitious. (laughs) Matthew Martini Baybind. Here I am. Hi, friend. How are you, man? I'm ready for this, because we are re-educating all the bitches out there on what the ambitious movement is all about, really. Mm. Because if you haven't started from the very beginning of the ambitious podcast, which I suggest that you get your shit together and go back to the very beginning and start, yeah, and just listen. You should listen to them. I I am. (laughs) Maybe you'd learn a couple things. I'm gonna start listening now. (laughs) Again. (laughs) So if you have been a follower to the ambitious movement and the podcast for quite some time, you already know about what I like to call the six life makers and breakers. And today I'm going to give you the best advice on how right now you can implement each one to live an ambitious life in 2020. But before I start, I want you to, I want to remind each and every one of you to go to www.kbmfc.com and check out all the amazing things that we have coming down the pretty pink pipeline. And I thank you from the bottom of my little Black Heart. And before we get started, I always like to give an amazing shout out to our podcast sponsor, Ayana, owner of Prana Hair, Skin, and Lash. Go ahead and reach out to her on pranahairskinandlash.com. Tell her I sent you and you will get some ambitiousness. Maybe, <laughs> a, maybe a new do, yep. maybe some new eyebrows, yes. maybe some lashes. Yep. As you can see, Ayanna has done nothing for Matt, if you're watching have, from home. Yes. <laughs> she needs to do something for me. We need a microblade, like a, a handlebar mustache or something on you. I oh, think that would be, be very- That like, would be beautiful. Or maybe like a, like a MacGyver <laughs> mustache. Did MacGyver have a mu- Did MacGyver know. have- No, he didn't. I never really What's the guy's MacGyver. name that has a porn stash? The porn stash? Yeah. Who oh, was it? Oh, that was McLeod. The guy in the Who horse. was it? Who had the good porn stash in the 70s? Mm. A good porn stash. Yeah. Yeah. Good porn stash. Oh, no. But wasn't he on Friends? Maddie, Maddie from my company had a picture of <laughs> porn stash. <laughs> oh, what? Is that still going on? No, no, that's all. Did he now. shave it? I when did he shave it? It's gone. He had the beard. He did the beard November or whatever. And oh, for Christ He was the only almighty. one growing a beard. He came What's in, the guy's like, name from Three Men and a Lady, a Little Baby? Oh, um, Tom, Tom Selleck? Tom Selleck. Yeah, Tom like Selleck. a Tom Selleck porn stash. Yes. I'm into that. <laughs> I think we should bring oh, that I'll back. Start, I'll start growing mine now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. You see, you see it's so yet? crazy. Matt can, can't grow hair on his head, but on his crack of his ass, <laughs> loaded. it is loaded. Loaded with it. Oh, <laughs> I can put it in a bun. He can put, he can put his ass hair in a bun. I can put it in a bun. He can put it in a bun. Oh, that song's going to be stuck in my damn head. Has anybody that. heard that song yet? I love it. I've heard it way too much lately. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's my new it's my new favorite obsession. <laughs> I got my edges back. Yeah. I got my edges back. When you go speak, you should have that coming out. No. <laughs> Only flawless Beyonce for when I speak, uh, right. when I walk on yes. stage. Yeah, I love Beyonce. Yes. <laughs> Duh. She's the queen bee. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to break it down. We're going to talk about the six life makers and breakers. And I'm going to give you right now the most important decision in each category. Mm. And then Matt is going to pretend <laughs> that he knows what the fuck he's talking about. I, I know what's going on. Yeah, hardly. I live with the ambitious one. So I know. <laughs> you are so first, fucking lucky. First handed. You are so freaking lucky. I am. Yeah. I'm very grateful. You should be. I am very grateful. Because God bestowed upon yeah. you I know. so much. I have it all. I have it all. <laughs> all right, y'all. 
first and foremost, we're going to talk about, in my opinion, this is the most important one, mm. and that's non-negotiable spiritual practices. So that's number one. And when you get the book, so don't forget to get ready for the pre-sale of Ambitious the Book by going and signing up for all the pre-sale information on my website, kbmsc.com. But the way that I broke the Ambitious book down is actually the way that I'm going to break today down as well, mm -hmm. because I feel like there's an order. So if you don't have non-negotiable spiritual practices, really what else is there? Right. That's Ad like the basis. Yes, That's absolutely. the foundation yes. of being ambitious. So the number one, non-negotiable spiritual practices is ask yourself if the thoughts that you are having in your mind are yours or they're someone else's. We all have this never ending loop of crazy and off topic thoughts that run through our brains over and over and over all freaking day, every day, 24 seven. Can I get an amen out there amen. if you're feeling that? Oh, yeah. So this is normal and it's also part of being human. But if you really pay attention to the streams of consciousness, you will soon realize that many of the thoughts that you have on a daily basis are not your own. So hear me out on this. They have been subconsciously programmed by someone from your family of origin or a caregiver or a teacher from childhood or young adulthood. So for example, when you hear in your head, I really suck at math. That's always been like a reoccurring theme in my brain. Like, oh, I really suck at math. I really suck at math. Or some people might go so far as to say, I really suck at math and that's why I'm broke. You must stop right there in that moment and ask yourself, hold on Katie or hold on Susie or Sally or whoever the hell is listening out there in a bitch's land. Is this thought my own truth or is this someone else's truth? And nine times out of 10, it's never your truth. And it's funny because I was talking about this um, with a friend the other day. I was telling her this same exact thing and I was telling her how um, my shaman said this to me because I went to my shaman a couple weeks ago and I was like, oh, I just, I keep having like these reoccurring thoughts in my head and it's like this never ending loop and I can't get rid of it. And I try so hard and it's, it's just a struggle. And she's the one that actually said to me, Katie, I want you to do this. When you go home and you start having these thoughts, stop in your tracks and say, are the thoughts I'm having in my mind, my truth, or are they someone else's truth? And I started to realize that 99% of the thoughts in my head are not my own right. when they're negative. Right. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Do you Absolutely. feel this too? I've had it where it was, um, I was brought up, you know, was told, yo, Matthew really doesn't know how to fix things. What am I? I have two hands. Oh my hands. God, he still does it. I have two hands. I have two arms. I have two legs. <gasps> is this where it all and came from? It is. And it was funny because when we were talking about this, that was one of the first things that came to me. Hold and on. I'm like, I'm like, wow, you know, I'm, I was, I'm a respiratory therapist. I know how to run ventilators. I know how to do all these different things. Keep people things. alive by Keep breathing. Keep people alive. And that's all machinery and all these different things. And I'm like, wow. I says, you know, that's, that's how I started. And I'm like, it, fixing things is not that more difficult, right? I should be able to be able to fix. Who things. said this? I think my dad. So wait a minute. Give me he a give fix. me a scenario. <coughs> oh God, he's coughing again. So, so, this fucking cough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm getting better at it, though. I moved it mostly out of the way, but barely. Let me go back to my barely. Let me go back to my okay. spot where I was talking about. Here we are. And what was happening was, <coughs> uh, as I finished oh. my conversation with you. Uh, is that this was a thought that was installed in me yes. that I adopted, right? I took this thought on. I, I can fix things. I can do whatever I want to do if somebody either taught me or showed me or whatever yes. the case may be. But I automatically almost eliminated like learning how to like do re repairs or, you know, okay. put, I'm not going to put on a deck or something like that on oh, my house. No, we know. Right? We but, know. You know. So that's what I thought of. So your dad said this to you. Yeah. He so he just it. would say, oh, Matt doesn't know how to fix things. No, he doesn't things. know how to fix anything like that. Right. But he would then think back after. I was like, oh, he didn't know how to fix anything. So he just assumed that I couldn't <laughs> learn this. And well, he, he could have learned. Right. Right. You don't fix shit though. No. Well, What maybe, do you fix? Maybe, I want to know. Maybe nothing. That's what I'm I've saying. I've never seen you bang a nail in a wall at our no, house. No, I, I, uh, I'm good at light bulbs. <laughs> Changing light Sounds bulbs. Sounds like an old like freaking ethnic at, joke. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, painting? I mean, what the fuck paint. have you ever painted? I, if there's a little chip, I can get the paint Matt, to go over and paint we just, that. Oh, hold on. We just had all new alarm system put in our house, and they yes. put in smaller alarm systems. So now there's like chipped paint. That shit's been sitting there for three months, and I keep being like, wow, wouldn't it be nice if someone spackled this and just like did a touch-up on it? Well, you know something? I'll tell you right now. I know where the paint is now. Tonight, you're going to go home, I've, and you're going to do I've that. I found it. 
and then now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna I'm gonna surprise. I'm gonna put you. this on my Instagram stories, people. So if you want to follow me at Katie Boyd and Bitches, you will maybe will see. You'll see me paint, Mister Fix It, so I can fix some things. So there you go. Oh, that's not my loop my anymore. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fixer. Oh, this is such. <laughs> this is news to me. Yes. This is news to me. It's good news. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna challenge you to fix some things. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm ready. All right, people. So ask yourself. Are the thoughts in your mind yours or there's someone else's? And if there's someone else's, you got to start realizing like, this is not my story. Mm-hmm. I am not a self-fulfilling prophecy. Just because this idea has been passed down generally, generationally does not mean this is going to be my reality going forward. Correct. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And if you believe the thoughts in your mind, you're not being ambitious. And just identifying thoughts in your mind like that too, like things that we tell ourselves, is huge, right? Because when you find something out that's not you, but a thought, then, yes. you know, you can change it. You can change it if you choose to. I don't know how far I want to change this fixing the thing. I'm just like I'm thinking of all the shit at <laughs> home that buried. he can fix. <laughs> I mean, this is really, home. really exciting. All right. 2020, I'm going to get a lot of shit fixed in my house. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Number two. So our second of the six life makers and breakers are feelings, emotions, and fierce boundaries. Okay? So this is what I want you guys to do. Know what you stand for and stick to the boundaries no matter what. So know what you stand for and stick to the boundaries no matter what. So part of living life ambitiously is knowing your values and your core desired feelings. And when you know what your values in life are, you can easily tell others that the thing they are proposing doesn't match up with you or what you like or love, Mm -hmm. or hate, or loathe, or dislike as a human, right? The same thing goes with your core feelings. When you know how you want to feel all the time, and you ask yourself if the thing that you're about to do, or that someone is asking me to do, helps me feel the way I want to feel, then you can make better decisions. And when you use those two boundary rules, you free up time and energy and it helps you become the HBIC of your existence. Mm, and and we we use this every day. Absolutely. absolutely. Every freaking day. Yeah, if it doesn't align where I'm going or what I want to do, no. or it's going to suck up too much time or whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. I'm like, it's just, this is a hell mm-hmm. no, I'm not doing it. I just asked a friend to actually do something with me business-wise and he was such a prick about it. Mm. And I was literally like, Oh, I can either spend like three days annihilating you, which is how Katie Boyd used to act like 10 years ago. (laughs) I would literally wake up and I'd be like, time for the annihilation station. (laughs) Who's going to get it today? You never want to be on that end. No, no, because I can can be a fucking tyrant. I'm glad you changed. Yes. That's not good. But I just realized like, okay, the way that this person just responded to me shows me that they're not in my vibrational frequency. Mm -hmm. God is always watching out for me and the universe is always watching out for me. So I'd rather know that this person is a prick now right. than find out like two years from now. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, and some, I can just say, eat a big fat bag of dicks and move on with my life. And some, you can say that or just move away. I like the big fat <laughs> dick thing. My 2020, one of my 2020 themes is just tell people to go pound sand. <laughs> pound sand. It feels good sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's actually a good spiritual, it's a good spiritual practice to tell, sometimes you got to tell someone to go screw. If they suck, sometimes you do. Yeah. Yeah. You do. Because I think that in the spiritual realm too, like everyone's just like, well, you're spiritual. You shouldn't be mean or you shouldn't treat people like that. It's like being spiritual actually means stepping up and saying what I believe sometimes. And defending yourself. And defending myself. Right. Right. Absolutely. We're just telling people to eat a big fat bag of dicks. (laughs) Or that. (laughs) Hey, if you don't don't agree with me, I'm going to tell you to go eat one new. Uh, Yeah. No, I agree with you. I just, this is a bitch's podcast. Actually, because I'll say if, <laughs> if somebody is treating me like an ass and, and they're doing something, I'm like, oh, okay, this person's gone already because mentally I just cut them out. Yes. I'm not going to do anything with them right. ever again. No. So it's almost like if the universe is moving people out of your way so yes. you can bring in new people that are probably going to have more of your vision. Absolutely. Where you want to go, right? So you can align. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Thank you, universe, <laughs> for, moving, for moving people swiftly out of my way so I can step into my power, right? Absolutely. Yes. And then number three, is health. So, you know, everyone's always like, Katie, get to the stuff about business and making money. And I'm like, yeah, but if you have $10 million in the bank and you're sick all the fucking time, who gives a shit? And you are your business. So if you're not in a good state of mind and if you're not strong and healthy and you're not taking care of yourself first, your business is going to suffer. 100%. You're going to either be sick or your mind's not going to be where it needs to be to make yep. hard decisions. Um, and 
being able to be, uh, you know, have that sense of acuity of what's going on around you so you can see the competition or people in your organization that are not moving in the way you want your yes. organization to move. And sometimes you got to cut somebody out. And so if you're not where you need to be mentally, physically, you're not going to be able to see the whole picture to yes. make educated, sometimes very tough decisions. Totally. Right? So health is number three. And in my opinion, in 2020, if you want to implement health in one of the six life makers and breakers, the most out of all of the different practices, if I could give you just one, it would be to implement a fasting routine, right? Mm. So the old idea of eating six meals a day has gone out with frosted lipstick and side ponytails. (laughs) (laughs) Do you remember those? Yeah, I do. I'm sure you Uh, dated a couple girls that had frosted lipstick and side ponytails and they wore like like a virgin gloves. Yes, absolutely. That was the time. That was the 80s. That was good old days. So fasting is a great way to rest your system. It's an amazing way to rejuvenate your cells because when you fast, your body uses old cells that aren't functioning functioning optimally anymore as energy, as well as uh, takes inflammation totally out of the body. So even fasting, like intermittently fasting, you know, for twelve to twenty four hours and eating one meal a day, was which is what we in the business call OMAD, which is one meal a day, um, or even doing some extended fasting, like 48 hour fast or 72 hour fasts, um, on just water or water with electrolytes. So we just recently started a 28 day fasting yoga and keto called the ambitious 28 protocol. And it's mm-hmm. just yoga class, yoga classes and intermittent fasting and extended fasting and a ketogenic food protocol. And the women are like just going nuts for it. Love it. They were like, wait a minute. When I read my fitness magazine, it tells me to eat complex carbohydrates at every meal, six meals Mm -hmm. a day. And it's like, no one can freaking do that unless you're a bodybuilder. And even the bodybuilders aren't doing that anymore. Bodybuilders are actually super into intermittent fasting and extended fasting now. And I, and I love working out and I love taking care of my body, obviously. But I'll tell you the one thing that I really fought you on and fought myself, just thought almost like a limiting belief. I can't mm. fast or I can only do twenty four hours or I could and now I'm doing like a forty I'll do forty eight hour fast. I've been doing it for probably a month, um, consistently every Monday. Uh, Sunday night's my meal. Yes. And then I won't eat again until Tuesday. Yes. And I'll tell you something, I feel better, my joints feel better. Everything just works better. And I fought it for so long. I'm like, ah, that's great. I'm not doing it. But if you're at a plateau or you're stuck, I'm telling you to do that. Good I would time. do 48 hour fast and I would say to Matt, like, are you going to do the 48 hour fast? I mean, he's like, yeah, no, I'm going to, um, I'm going to eat tonight. Definitely eat tonight. I'm like, bro. <laughs> I'm almost like rain man. No, no, no. Oh, definitely eating. Definitely eating. eating. Definitely, definitely eating. eating. Definitely oh my eating. God. Yeah. And I'm like, come on. Like you're, you're actually holding yourself back from yeah. stepping into the, like that no, next phase of the it, fasting. It, and when he did one 48 hour fast, he's like, Oh my God, Katie, this feels great. I'm like, Oh my God. Hello. The Clinton administration called like, fuck, I've been trying to get you to do this for so damn long. Well, I take a little time. Why don't people listen to me? Don't you understand who I am? I'm freaking genius. But now it's funny because somebody will say, Oh, I listened to your podcast and you know, Matt, you're unbelievable. I said, thank you very much. Oh my God. Someone shoot me now. And they're like, no, they, they, um, and I, they say, I love what you guys talk about with the, except the fasting. And I'm like, Oh my God, I was in the same (laughs) boat. Who said that? I hated it. A woman at my dentist office, and she wanted to. She's like, she goes, "All right, I'll try it after the holidays." I go, "No, do it now oh during God, the holidays." After the holidays, so everyone else is a fat fuck, right? <laughs> and you're, you're lean and mean, and then you have no inflammation. You'd be like, "Oh, I don't understand what the problem was." Right? Do the forty-eight. Take the take absolutely. A chance and do it or, or twenty-four or whatever. I think that you know because we just got through the holidays, right? And I say got through because I mean we. I didn't get through it, but most everyone out there got through it, right? Yeah. And people. Were like, you know, fuck it. I'm just gonna eat my face off. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna just be I'm gonna, swollen. <laughs> I'm gonna be so fucking bloated and so uncomfortable. I just want to be left the fuck alone in the new year. Yeah, in the new year. Right? I just my sweatpants and I'm like, everywhere. come on, guys. Like think about going into like every one of your new years, no matter how many or how not a lot you have left on this earth. Because I don't know your story. And I'm a fat fuck. I love to eat, believe me. I love I'm a fat to fuck eat. too, man. I love food more than anything. It's like my everything, but I've just like 
it doesn't make me feel good. No. Like it, there was like, I always talk about this. My grandmother had this magnet on the fridge and it was like this opera singer. And she was very, she was very Rubenesque. And it said, um, a moment on the lips forever on the hips. So every time I would go to get something out of my Nana's fridge, I would like read that shit. And I'd be like, oh, fuck. And I would just shaming close. You. She was shaming you. me. Oh, shame. She was shaming. It was totally shit. It was like shame. the walk of shame in freaking game of Thrones. But now I'm just like, Hey, when I do eat, I make sure that when I do you know, have my refeed. It's so yeah. yummy. It's so delicious. I mean, it's not like gluten or anything like that. It's like a beautiful steak. But and boy, you appreciate food. When oh you my ha- God. When you really get to eat after you do the fast. Yeah. Right? It really brings back, it really, maybe that's why in religion they do it so much because it 100%. really brings you back to, wow, how grateful am I yes. when you're hungry yes. or you're, you know, trying to accomplish something with that. And I'm going to start doing some dry fasting in February with the girls, um, at Katie Boyd's Miss Fit Club and dry fasting is well, there's two different types of dry fasting. One is um, you don't you don't have any water contact, so you can't wash your hands. There's you can't brush your teeth. You can't drink water for 24 hours. Stay home. Stay that's, home because you're gonna stink. That's a home day. <laughs> you're gonna stink. But the I've been doing some crazy research on it, and there's so many things that. It, it heals. Wow. And a lot of people, like, it's not so much that they want to lose weight or release weight. It's more that they have, like, ailments or autoimmune disease and different things like that that they, or some kind of inflammatory disease that they want to heal. Mm-hmm. And dry fasting is really the way to go. So they have soft dry fasting where you can actually brush your teeth and wash your hands and take a shower. Mm-hmm. And then they have hard dry fasting, which is no shower, no teeth brush, no hand washing. Hmm. So you, your body, you don't drink water for like, I've seen people do it for like, I'm not, I'm not saying that anyone should do this. I think it's crazy. Um, there's a guy that I follow who does like dry fast every quarter for like four to se- um, four to seven days, Ugh. but it's like incredible. Yeah. Wow. Matt's like, but can you, well, can you do, imagine not drinking 48s. for a day, drinking water for a day? No, and like how no. delicious water tastes when oh you don't drink. I love it. Yeah. You ever go to hot yoga and like mm. you have that one sip of water and you're just like, oh my God, that was like That's angels gra- on my tongue. That's gratitude. The other night when I was at sushi, I was drinking probably, I had like seven glasses of water. The lady's, the lady's like, you're like, thirsty. Yeah, I'm like, oh thirsty. my God. Because he doesn't drink all freaking day. No. Well, I was drinking that night. Well, you were drinking vodka probably. That's why. <laughs> so fast, fast, fast. Incorporate in, in some way, shape, and form. And if you're like, shit, I'm afraid. I don't want to do this alone. Reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to help you. Yes. And before you do it, check with your doctor. Yes. <laughs> I'm covered. <laughs> <laughs> No one's going to sue you, bitch. Don't worry about that. Katie Boyd's Misfit Club is coming. (laughs) I love you. Check your doctor first. Uh, Hide your kids, hide your wife. All right. Number four, relationships. So relationships is number four out of the six life makers and breakers of being your most ambitious self. And this is all about finding your peer groups or what I like to call in ambitious land, your mistress mind. So you know that all the men folk call it my mastermind, Yes, but I'm calling calling it my mistress mind. There's nothing more important than finding your tribe and being surrounded by a sisterhood or a community of people who want the best for you and in turn desire nothing but happiness and success from them. Making a list of people who you desire to become closer with and that bring something big to the table is healthy and you deserve a strong circle of people surrounding you and lifting you up when you need it and you reciprocate the same Mm. to them, right? That's awesome. Yeah. I always want to be around people that make me laugh. Uh, that have fun, that bring something great to the table energetically, how yeah. the person is, right? Have you ever had friends that don't? Oh, yeah. What would you do with them? I, I don't hang around with them anymore or <laughs> I just become, you know, very busy. Oh, my you know, God. Which I'm very busy anyways. But I mean, the time I do have, and you know how busy we are, the time I do have, it's going to be with somebody that I really want to be with. Mm-hmm. I really, they're going to be so much fun. It's going to be, we're going to learn something. We're not going to talk about politics. Yeah, I don't want to get into politics. I don't want to talk about a bunch of garbage that doesn't affect what I'm no doing. No gossiping. No gossiping. You got it. Yeah. They're just good people. They want to just hang out, have a good time. They're usually busy like us. And when they spend time with us, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a gift. Absolutely. It's a treat, you know? And do you ever notice like all like the greats in the world, they all hang out together? Like there's definitely clubs of people that all surround themselves with each other. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I mean, if not, you just, you're a person that just will allow anybody to kind of glom onto you. Ew. And, you know, no, oh, I can't you. say anything. I don't want to hurt their feelings or whatever the case may be. Or No, you have to really be with people that it, it really have your back. Absolutely. You know, and, and just, you know. So I have it. a list in my journal of my peer groups. 
So it's like like literally a list of like people's names who are like my peer groups, who are people that like I go to dinner with, or I'll I will I would go on vacation with, or I would do yeah. something like out, outside the box with, right? Yeah. And when people like email me, they're like, "Hey, girl, you want to <laughs> get a cup of coffee?" And I'll be like, "Oh, let me go consult my journal of peer group names." And I'm like, "Oh, no, you're not on yeah. there." Yeah. And I'll just be like, "Sorry, right? No time for that. Yeah. Check back in 2029." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I just don't care. I don't care. Yeah. I know that sounds bitchy, but this is the ambitious podcast. So I'm not trying to fucking pretend yeah. I'm not being yeah. that way, right? And it's it's just protecting yourself, you know. Protect yourself. Protect yourself. Don't give your time away like it's just you know, poontang on the sidewalk. Not worth it. <laughs> not worth it. Not worth it. <laughs> not worth it. Number five, your environment. So five environment is fifth out of the six life makers and breakers. And if you follow the podcast for some time, we talk about environment being like your home, your surroundings. Like, are you an episode of Hoarders or are you Pinterest perfect? Or like, where do you land in that, in that world? Right. right. And um, the minimalism, essentialism, giving all your shit away, get rid of all your stuff, like the Marie Kondo, tidy, uh, you know, the art of tidying up yep. and life-changing magic of tidying up and whatever has been really sweeping the nation. And if you guys remember a couple podcasts ago, I had a good friend of mine and uh, fellow business mistress minder. Her name was Erin O'Connor, and she actually um, started to a company called Threads of Hope. One of the best things that you can do in 2020 is to cull your wardrobe and declutter it. Mm. So uh, a couple years ago, I started selling and donating and giving away any old clothing that was, you know, still wearable and beautiful, but it just wasn't my style or it didn't fit me or it just made my life so much easier. So when you stand in front of your closet full of clothes with nothing to wear, nothing is more freaking frustrating. And with Threads of Hope, Erin, the CEO and owner will come to your home and she'll help you clean out your closets or better yet, she'll just do it for you herself. She'll call your wardrobe and she'll tell you what to keep and what to donate and she will then haul all the clothes out of your house, sell them, and then she uh, takes a small percentage and she donates 20% to the charity of the, the month. And I'm telling you, like people will say like, okay, this weekend I'm not leaving the house and I'm going to rip my whole wardrobe apart. And it's like, you got to look at yourself like, okay, if I have these many hours my weekend, you could probably be working, you could probably be making money or having spending quality time right. with your family and not going through freaking you know, clothes from goddamn MC Hammer time. Yeah, if you've had it for over a year and you haven't worn it, guess what? Get rid of it. Yeah, right? it's so true. We'll yeah. Aaron get rid of it for you. No, Erin will do it. Dude, she's like yeah. the master. Yeah. She's incredible. So reach out to Erin at threadsofhope.com and she is just going to be a life changer. So culling your wardrobe, in my opinion, is one of the most important Can't, things for your environment. Katie, I got a good tip on yeah. another podcast. Yeah, I want to hear it. At the start of the year, mm -hmm. Put all your hangers backwards. I've done that before. Right? It works. As you wear things, they get to go forward. Yes, and I then, totally agree with that. And yeah. I also think that, um, remember smart. back in the day, I don't, I don't know, like you guys remember this, but like my grandmother would be like, oh, we got to take the winter clothes out of the, you know, out of oh, the yeah. freaking hope put, chest. Oh, the hope chest, yeah, with the mothballs. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, the mothballs. The mothballs would be like, what the hell? And then you take your summer clothes and you'd put them like, yeah. you know, in storage. Yeah. But now, like I noticed, like the other day I was in my closet and I was like, why do I have like 15 pairs of shorts? Like it's freezing cold. Right. When am I going to wear these for? Right. So really doing like that is amazing t tip, doing the whole hanger thing. Yep. And then saying, okay, like it's cold as witch's titty. I should right. probably put my summer clothes away. Yeah. Or, you know, there are some summer clothes for females that you can kind of like mix and match into your winter wardrobe. But like, honestly, yeah. it's just better. And you start realizing like how much shit you actually use and how, what you don't use. Yeah. You know? I agree. 100%. Well, you, Matt just has a whole closet full of stained fucking polo shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I take Let's them, be if honest. I, if I wear it, then I go, okay, I, this one Katie can get out because she's an amazing cleaner. Oh, or fuck I have to that. take. I have to take this. This is. I don't want to show oh. her. That. This one's too screwed up. I don't want to show her, so I'll sneak it out to take it to the cleanest. <laughs> Was this the anti-feminist podcast? Like, what is happening? You always take care of me. You take good care of me. I don't know if that. That's that's. Yeah, I uh, got myself in a know, bad I'm in, hot, I'm in, pot of water I'm, with that one. I'm in good shape. Is it I'm mostly sauce? Sauce. Greasy sauce. Greasy sauce. Greasy, yeah. sauce. Greasy, yeah. greasy you know, sauce. Something. The uh, other day, he he had this beautiful like sweater on, <laughs> and he looked so handsome. And I go, and I said in my mind, oh, he looks so nice in that sweater. 
And then all of a sudden, he was picking up sushi to put it in his mouth. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I was like, how do you like me now? Yep, yep. And then my vagina just dried up like the Sahara. Oh, God. <laughs> just I like clean, I fucking it. tumbleweeds. I, cl- I cleaned it up very quickly. Powder blowing. Quickly. Powder blowing across the Sahara <laughs> Desert. <laughs> Note to self men out there that listen to Imp bitches. No one likes a dirty motherfucker. <laughs> no, don't don't go try to pick up any Yeah, ladies. don't try to get when laid you, after you, you drop when you shit all over your and... shirt. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> Actually, we're just gonna let we're gonna make you drive <sighs> fast so you don't drop shit all over your shirt for I'll Christ's sake. I'll be very sakes. clean but stinky. <laughs> <sighs> I'll look clean, but I'll be stinky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Number six out of the six life makers and breakers, the most important thing in 2020 to live life ambitiously when it comes to your wealth and your abundance and your money mindset is to track your expenses for one month and be absolutely horrified. This was an eye-opener for me. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't believe and my a, eyes. So out there in a bitch's land, I'm sure you're saying to yourself, well, Katie, you're a bitch. You <laughs> bet your ass I am, and I'm a rich one too. <laughs> Want to know why? Because I've got a ser- I got serious and honest with my spending habits a long time ago and stopped bleeding it was mental. And I have a little friend over here oh. that ref- that thinks he's the money guru, but he is just like frivolous AF when it comes to certain shit he spends money on. One thing they really brought to my attention that really mm-hmm. blew my mind was mm-hmm. the, uh, what was it, either Pandora or a Google thing that I thought it was yours, you thought it was mine. And then when we sat down and we actually looked at it, Apple it was, now music. mind you, it was probably about 14 bucks, but it was like 14 bucks I was paying every like month, every single month. And, and you didn't I even thought, know you had it. I go, oh, I think this is Katie. She must use this for the gym or nope. she must use this for whatever. Nope. And to sit down and go over everything, I was embarrassed. He's like, I was embarrassed. Wait, I was he, like, so we're going over all of our expenses. Right now, I go, I go already got screwed for probably a year and a half yep. and didn't have any idea what this was. I thought it was yours and it was a rude, it was probably the best money I spent because it was such an educational tool. Now I go back and look at every um, charge that goes on. Yes. Actually, we do. Every two yes. weeks we sit down and say, what's this? What's yes. this? What's this? And we go through every single thing and mm-hmm. you're just bleeding money that you don't even know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Because Matt uses Pandora for music when right. he does the gym stuff, when yes. you're at the martial arts studio. Correct. But then he also had Apple Music. That I must have just pressed on because they make it so damn <sighs> No, it easy. just comes with it. Yeah. I think it just comes with it and you have to actively go in and be like, I don't want this. Then I, Which is know, like, kudos me. to you, Apple, you sneaky fuck. <laughs> it took me I a love year and ya. a half. I love you. You really know how to take advantage of this bald man over I here. Got juiced. He's like the <laughs> little matchstick girl of Apple was, Apple music. Uh, the matchstick girl of it. You got you it. You were. Yeah. And I was and so he's like, I What is this fourteen nine nine every month? And I was like, <laughs> That's not mine, dude. And he's like, How do you know it's not yours? And I'm like, Because you go into your back end of your iTunes, you can see everything that you purchase purchase every month, you dumb fuck. Yeah. And I went back and I found it. It's a dumb fuck that I was. Yes. And then I went ham. Yes. And I canceled it and that is it. So now yes. I know every damn thing that's coming out of that account. And it was the best spending I ever mm-hmm. spent because it will never happen again. So if you want a good kick in your Lululemons, <laughs> track one month of your expenses and see where you're uh, bleeding out your money. Is it like Google, is it Google, whatever the fuck it was. It was I don't you, know. He, Matt had Gmail suites open that he didn't even know existed. I'm like, oh my God. Oh, no, Karina's using time. friggin' um, oh, she Uber up. Eats, she Uber s- Eats, she Uber s- Eats. She sneaks something in there every now and then She's too. like a little just, pork barrel. Just when she thought I was sleeping on the job. Now yeah. it's like, ha ha ha. You were sleeping. He was. was. Thank you. I was. So that is my final. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> he knows which side his thanks, his bread is thanks, buttered. Thanks, Mr. Ed Sullivan. <laughs> You're welcome. Totally kicking me in the right nut right? while she attacks the left. Hey, whatever it takes. It takes a village to raise a child, you know? God. So those are my six most important items in the top <laughs> life makers and breakers. So if you want to live life ambitiously in 2020, take a listen to what I just said. Take three listens if it really doesn't <laughs> absorb into your head. And thank you each and every one of you for being crusaders to this ambitious movement. Like I always say, see you next Tuesday. <laughs> Good job, babe. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.